Well, the general election may be over, but now it's time for the specific election. And to the electoral college, the only college with a conservative bias. Some people are concerned about the interview process for state electors, which generally consists of, do you know someone from the party that just won? Great. If I hand you a piece of paper, could you spell the candidate's name correctly on it? Whoa, got it right without even needing to see a bumper sticker. You're overqualified. Generally, this elector appointment process is incredibly mundane, but the Trump administration never fails in giving me the opportunity to explore the intricacies of institutions I previously just took for granted. Today we're looking at the potential strategy of not certifying state election results and then having the state legislature appoint their own slates of electors instead. Mark your calendars for December 8th because oh boy, that is the single date that this entire episode revolves around. That's the day that states have to submit their electors to the electoral college for voting. There is no partial credit for late submissions, even if you have a good excuse or a note from your doctor. In the 2000 case of Bush v. Gore, there were two questions. First, were the recounts in Florida unconstitutional, of which a uncontroversial 7 to opinion said that they were. Second, do we have enough time before the state electoral deadline this year December 8th to do a constitutional recount, to which a 5-4 majority said, Nah, we marked our calendars months ahead of time, can't delay electoral appointments. I can't book a replacement Christmas flight on such short notice. Just go with the results you got, I'm sure they're fine. So with December 8th in mind, let's get to the planning. The single most important thing you need to keep in your mind if you're pursuing this strategy is, do not, under any circumstances, have your state secretary or governor certify the election results. That's an instant game over. In Bush v. Gore, before the recounts, the state secretary had certified the election results, so those votes had credibility when they were challenged in court. You really have to drag your feet and spend the next month alleging voter fraud while not doing anything to fix it. Really run the clock until December 8th. A flurry of lawsuits filed by the Trump campaign, most of which have been defeated in court, appear aimed at slowing down state certification timelines and possibly providing a pretext to declare a failed election. Of course, I could probably end the episode right here because Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania have Democratic governors and secretaries of state. Election results in Michigan and Wisconsin are certified by bipartisan boards. Arizona has a Democratic secretary of state, and the Georgia Republican secretary of state has said that he found no evidence of significant voter fraud. Hypothetically, though. What happens when an uncertified vote count hits an immovable deadline? Well, we have a statute for that. Specifically, 3 USC uh, artists formerly known as Prince 2, which says that whenever any state has held an election for the purpose of choosing electors and has failed to make a choice on the day prescribed by law, the electors may be appointed on a subsequent day in such a manner as the legislature of such state may direct. Yes, if nobody wins in your state's election, everybody just slowly turns toward the state legislature and asks, so what's the plan? Unfortunately for this strategy, if you weren't convinced 30 seconds ago when I said I could end the episode there, here's a second huge cliff. GOP state lawmakers in Arizona, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin have all come out and preemptively said, even if the state leadership refuses to certify these results, we're not going to go against the popular vote in appointing electors for our states. At this point, well, this plan might be more monkey wrench than machine. Still, assuming that they change their minds, let's dig even deeper. So it's November 8th and you don't have a certified election result. Well, time to improvise. Biden won the popular vote, but Trump won our hearts. We're going to put in our own slate of Trump electors. This is not the end of the conversation though, because critics argue, 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just because there isn't a certified election result doesn't mean you can't just swoop in there and do whatever you want. There's one key phrase in that law that has not been addressed yet. Has failed to make a choice on the day prescribed by law. So what constitutes failing to make a choice? I mean, this entire circumvention statute hinges on that phrase. Someone took the time to define what it means, right? Well, the 1876 law is ambiguous about what constitutes a failed election. Yup, anyone who complains about how today's acts are too long, well, back then Congress was just shooting first and asking questions later. So is an uncertified election with a win or a decision? Well, if it is, a separate statute applies. The safe harbor statute that Al Gore is all too familiar with. It says that if a state has a process that produces a contested outcome prior to election day, then the determination reached by that process shall be conclusive and shall govern in the counting of the electoral votes as provided in the constitution. The only requirement is that the final determination be reached by December 8th. In standard English, that means, if your state has a vote counting method that produces an outcome by the time appointing electors comes around, well, that's the number we're going with, even if it's still being disputed by anybody out there. Of course, an uncertified outcome might not be an outcome. That'll be determined by who has the better lawyer. So that's the current discussion about state legislators appointing electors contrary to the popular votes in their states in a nutshell. The necessary people for this strategy in swing states do not seem to be enthusiastic about lighting the fuse to this legal tinderbox. So unfortunately, I probably won't be able to cover this incredibly interesting potential debate as a Supreme Court episode. Even if one state did do this, that would not be enough to change the election results unless that state was California. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, first I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. Thank you. If you want to see my coverage of Bush v Gore, click here. Remember to like, subscribe, ring that bell and all that other fun YouTube stuff that tells the algorithm that I have a good episode on my hands. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.